Hi, this is your host Apni Bharatiya and welcome to your Fireless Talk. And today we have with us once again Martin Mao, CEO and co-founder of Chronosphere. Martin, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. It's been a while since we chatted. I don't like it. I don't like this gap. So I do want you to refresh not only my memory but also the memory of our viewers. Number one is that what is Chronosphere all about? Uh, when did you start? What problem you saw in the market that you felt needed to be fixed? That led to the creation of this company. Chronosphere is an observability company. And in fact, we're observability uh, built for control. And I'll explain what that means in a second. So you can imagine observability company, infrastructure monitoring, application monitoring, even the business as well. That's the, the ultimate problem or the solution that we, we provide. Um, we're built for control in the sense that uh, some of the problems in the industry right now are that a lot of the solutions uh, both cost too much uh, in, in terms of how, how expensive they are, uh, but also um, they struggle to give better outcomes. So, you know, you can imagine um, uh, trying to use these things to figure out issues in your, in your hardware stack, in your software stack. The tools, the existing tools today aren't great at uh, solving particular problems in a modern architecture. So what we try to do at Chronosphere is to give our customers uh, control of their data, control of their costs, and control of the outcomes uh, as well. What role do you see Observatory plays in modern infrastructure? And where do you see these overlaps happen? Where you're like, hey, this is the role of Observatory, which is taking over from those areas. Security could be one, a lot of things, performance, SREs. I mean, we can throw so many keywords there. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. So to the first part of the question about the open source uh, standards there, that's definitely been one trend. And I would say while there are a lot of open source uh, tools out there, I think the biggest uh, benefit of the movement is the standards like open telemetry. And what that allows a company to do is to produce observability data in one industry standard and send it to whichever tools they want. So you're not, you're no longer locked in uh, to one particular solution, one particular vendor uh, there, and you really own the production of your data um, and, and you can use it with, with which, whichever tools you want. So that's been a positive uh, for the industry uh, for sure. And it's one that Chronosphere supports. So uh, for us, we don't create data in any proprietary protocols. We want companies to own and produce data in the open source standards and then leverage our tools on the back end for that. And I think observability, it's, it's, a, it's definitely involved and there's definitely overlap. I think at its core, the problem of you know giving you visibility and helping you solve issues in your infrastructure or your applications that still exists. So I think that um, that that core um, that function of observability has not changed so much in our transition to the cloud. I think what has changed a little bit is probably two things. One, the types of problems you encounter in the cloud are different, and therefore, and, and the types of causes of issues are different, and therefore you need a different set of tools to go solve them. And then there is increasingly, I'll say, overlap with, uh, in particular, I'll say probably the security space, uh, in the sense that um, a lot of the data being produced is the same source. So you can imagine log data, for example. Uh, log data being produced in applications is both used for security purposes by security tools and by observability tools for observability purposes, right? So there's definitely an overlap in terms of the use cases on this data. Uh, and often in a problem like that, perhaps you need uh, a piece of technology like a telemetry a telemetry pipeline or something like that to help you collect all, all the data for both use cases and route to the to the appropriate data to the appropriate use cases there uh, uh, for sure. Uh, and, and then I would say outside of that, I'd say the overlap probably comes with um, operating our, our software, right? So not only did we move to the cloud, I think a lot of companies have adopted a DevOps mentality where the developers operate their piece of software. And I think in that operation, observability is one of the many tools that a developer needs to ensure uh, the ongoing um, you know, maintenance and uptime uh, and, and ability to debug issues in their applications in production. Uh, since you talked about log data, can you also talk about, because uh, the fact is that, um, I mean, data, we used to say data is the new oil. I'm not talking just you know big data spaces, but even for internal, infrastructure, you know, to just, you know, keep an eye on the whole observable security, whatever it is, we all talk about data. <laughs> we can, I don't you know how to start talking about Gen AI, you know, data is, you know, the bloodline of modern economy. When it comes to log data, because organizations are collecting, generating so much of this data, what kind of volume you're seeing and is it becoming overwhelming 
for organizations to deal with this size of it? What kind of pain point do you see there? You know, 100%, I, I would say we did a recent study and the average expected uh, log volume increase year on year is 250%. So two and a half X more logs from these modern environments and, and you know, perhaps modern use cases uh, as well, right? So a huge increase in the volume of data that's being produced. Uh, and to your point, data maybe is the new oil for sure. One of the big differences I think between the two is that not every piece of data, it provides the same value perhaps versus like, you know, every barrel of oil is about the same. What's interesting is a lot of this data, the value of the data depends on how you use that data, it depends on what it is really uh, describing or what it can give you insight onto, into. So one of the big challenges with, you know, um, a huge volume of data is you can imagine the cost of storing that data goes up uh, generally directly. If you have two and a half X the amount of data, it costs you two and a half times more to store. So that's one problem. The second problem is you now have to sort through all of that additional data to figure out the meaningful insights to, to give you insights into what is going wrong in your particular application or in your particular um, uh, security use case there, right? So those are the problems that we see. And I'll say what's interesting about data is unlike oil, uh, not all data is the same. So one of the ways we recommend thinking about it is really having the tooling help you figure out what subsets of your data is actually valuable and what's not valuable, and then having you optimize the data in that particular way to both control the cost uh, and, and not pay for two and a half times the cost when you produce two and a half times the data, but also help you control the outcomes in terms of getting insights into whether this is data mean without having to sift through a lot more of that data. What are the other kind of aspect, negative aspect, you know, of this volume of data, which have kind of adverse effect on the operations and bottom line organizations. It could be cost, it could be resources they're investing in, it could just be complexity. What are those? So we talked about the cost in terms of uh, the value for sure, right? In terms of uh, complexity, you can imagine more data from more sources. You have to go transform that data between the, the different protocols. You have to put it in the different backend tools. You got to go route that data there. So it's a lot more complex to deal with a lot more data uh, from a lot more sources and go into a lot more uh, destination tools uh, there, there for sure. And then the last piece of the, that I mentioned is when there is more data, there is more for the end users to sift through. There is more um, for you to have to process and figure out what's going wrong. And that's actually leading to a worse outcome as well. If it takes a developer longer to figure out what's going on, you can imagine that's negatively impacting the business because you know your application or your service is down for longer and you're impacting the end customer experience even more. Can you talk about some of the other key findings, uh, what you learned through the survey, which of course gets gives us a pulse of the industry, but also helps us in kind of improving our services and products? We've covered a lot of the the, the findings from, from the survey already in, in some of the topics that we discussed, but you know you can imagine the big one was the expected increase in, in log data. That, that surprised us for sure. We knew that um, generally the volume of data increases over time, uh, but for log data, we weren't expecting a 250% increase uh, year on year. That was a much larger increase than, than we were sort of expecting. And I think it points to the additional number of use cases uh, now that we're seeing in our modern, uh, you know, cloud infrastructure than, we, than we've ever seen uh, before. Um, I think th through that survey, we also saw um, the increase in the amount of complexity there is because you can imagine new use cases means new sources of data, new sources of data, perhaps from in, in different protocols, um, perhaps gathering them from different locations. Um, new destinations, you can imagine there are more security, more observability tools than ever before. Uh, so more places to, to put that data, uh, to put maybe different copies of that data for different use cases. All of those trends were, were things that we saw in this, uh, the trends that I think we've been uh, anticipating uh, for, for a while, but haven't seen it sort of come out at, at these, um, you know, at, uh, or, or the growth uh, come out at these particular expected rates here. How efficient are your pipelines, your technologies? How do you help them save not just the cost, but all time and resources as compared to competitors? 100%. So uh, when it comes to the Chronosphere Telemetry Pipeline, that's actually a new product we just released. So this pipeline would actually sit in a customer's environment uh, in, the, in the ingest path of their log data uh, and help you sort of deal with the complexity by helping you transform all the uh, log data from the various sources 
and, and route them to, to different backends, enrich them, redact them. Perhaps if you have PRI in them, start to redact that, that data, optimize the data volumes to reduce the data volumes uh, as well. So all of those capabilities you get out from the chronosphere telemetry pipeline. And I'd say what's unique about it compared to a lot of the, the other solutions out there is its efficiency, right? So you can imagine these things have to process mass amounts of log data. And because our solution is written in C, uh, it's just a lot more efficient in terms of how much compute and memory our solution requires in order to process that data. And what that ultimately means for Chronosphere customers is that they spend less resources running our solution than a lot of the other solutions on the market, whether they're written in Go or perhaps in Node.js. And hence, they ultimately spend less resources and save more dollars in order to, to, to get the same uh, or even perhaps better benefits than the other solutions in the market. As earlier we were talking about, you know, just you mentioned Gen AI. Uh, of course, this is the hottest topic. Uh, what does Gen AI mean for Chronosphere? And I asked the question that uh, for two aspects, Gen AI as a workload, at the same time, Gen AI as an enabler or technology that Chronosphere can leverage. So as a workload, you can imagine completely new type of workload uh, producing even more data <laughs> and data in a different uh, type of way. So in terms of observability, I think there is a new set of use cases um, for a solution like Chronosphere to go and, and observe. Some of that is pretty similar to the existing use cases and some of that is, is pretty different. So that's one, one impact we've seen. And to what you said on the other impact, we've definitely been exploring ways in which we could adopt Gen AI technology uh, inside the platform. Uh, and what's been interesting here is that, you know, um, the default that both Chronosphere and probably every other vendor in the space went to initially was go put up a chatbot there to, to just help you uh, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, answer questions uh, about uh, about your very stack. And what we found is limited success there in terms of um, what it can be applicable for. It can help you craft queries. Uh, it can help you sort of um, summarize documentation and things like that. However, it doesn't really move the needle too much in the, in the core of what you're trying to use an observability tool for, which is to go find the root cause of a particular um, issue here. So while it doesn't fundamentally change the core of what an observability platform does, we do find benefits um, in in that process a little bit. So, you know, a couple of the examples that I mentioned earlier, plus also things like, you know, it's these large language models are pretty good at, let's say, summarizing unstructured log data is one potential use case there. Now, is summarizing unstructured log data going to point to exactly what the issue is? No, you need, a, you need that in conjunction with everything else. But as one additional, um, you know, as one additional capability, uh, it does it does tend to help. So we're definitely exploring ways in which we could leverage it here and there. But um, I guess perhaps luckily or unluckily for, for us, uh, it doesn't really uh, it, it doesn't really completely change the game in terms of root cause analysis uh, and triaging issues uh, there. What kind of things are in your pipeline this year? What can you expect from Chronosphere? What we've been working on recently at Chronosphere is expanding the platform, right? So we talked about the telemetry platform that we just, uh, that, sorry, the telemetry pipeline that we just added as a new product. We also expanded into log management recently so that Chronosphere can store the logs on our backend uh, as well. And in fact, in terms of capabilities, uh, we went from two to five over the last few months. Uh, here, So a huge amount of expansion in terms of the capabilities of the platform. And what we're looking to do in the next few months is to really get those capabilities out to the market, get them out to our existing customers, get them out to prospect customers as well. That's really going to be a big focus for us uh, as a company in the next few months and this year. And then uh, in addition to that, also explore other places in which we can add to the platform uh, as well. Martin, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, not only talk about Chronosphere, but also the latest you know, survey you folks did, the findings and how you're helping organizations tame this you know, log volume data. Uh, sorry, tame this you know, log data volume. Thank you so much for all those great insights. And I look forward to see you again, not in three years, but before that. So thank you. And let's uh, try to get together often. Thank you. 100%. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, let's chat before three years from now for sure.